We are now going to talk about how to develop a positive mindset. Everybody say, positive mindset. I want you to look at this glass. Now some people look at life the, the way they look at this glass. Some people will say, that glass is half empty. Some people will say, this glass is half full. What do you think? Are you sure? Some people look at this glass and say, oh, it doesn't even fill it up. My gosh, it's lacking. Everybody, everybody say that, lacking. They look at life in the same way. Life is lacking. Some people look at this glass and say, Wow, it's almost full. Wow, look at that. This will quench my thirst. And just a little bit more. Wow, they're appreciative. They're grateful. There are people who look at life in the same way. Let me tell you an old story. I've shared this story so many times to you, but I'll share it again because it's my favorite story. And you have no choice anyway, right? There was this grandmother and she was sitting in a chair on the beach with her grandson. And she was doing her cross stitch, looking at her lovely, lovely grandson with a shovel, little shovel, with a little hat, very near the water, playing and having fun. And the, and the grandmother was just looking at her grandson and doing her cross stitch when all of a sudden a tsunami, a tidal wave, a giant tidal wave coming, rushing towards them. And before she could scream, before she could say, my, my grandson, the tidal wave crashed onto her little boy. And when the, when the water receded back into the sea, the little boy was gone, was gone. And so the grandmother stood up, threw her cross stitch on the sand, looked up the sky, threw her fist unto God and said, Lord, I pray every day, go to Mass regularly. I'm a good woman. Bring back my little boy. And lo and behold, another giant tidal wave comes, <laughs> rushing towards her, crashes right in front of her. And when the water pulls back into the sea, the little boy was there again, all wet, dizzy, dazed, but was there. And you know what the woman did? She could not speak. She could not say anything. She was so shocked. And then all of a sudden, she frowned. She frowned, she pouted, and she said, Lord, a while ago, my little boy was wearing a hat. Where's his hat? There are people like that. You know what I'm saying? They're so blessed. There are many blessings in their life but they look for what's lacking. Tell someone beside you, don't be like that. <laughs> look at the blessing. Look at what's there. And you will understand. How many of you, brothers and sisters, I, I'm going to say this. It's very important for you to understand this. You are the product of your thoughts. You know that? You are the product of your beliefs. And that grandmother will never be happy because she will always look for the missing hat. You got me? You want to be happy? We're going to talk more about that. In life, there are winners and losers. Do you know that? You look around you, there are winners and there are losers. I'm going to tell you something. Winners are not more intelligent than losers. Winners are not more talented than losers. Winners have a positive belief. That's all. And they become winners. Losers don't have a positive belief. They keep on looking for what's lacking. They keep on looking for the problem. They keep, keep on looking for what's wrong. Winners always look. For, for what's happening good in their lives. Is there something good happening in your life? Yes. I'm going to tell you something. There are five blessings, five great things that happen. Before we talk about how to develop a positive mindset, we're going to talk about the five great things. I just want to convince you that you need to have a positive mindset. These are the five great things that will happen if you have a positive mindset. The first one is that you're, gonna, you're, you're going to have a greater self-worth. Everybody say that, self-worth. Why? Because when you have a positive mindset, you're able to see the goodness in you. You're able to see the beauty in you. What other people cannot see, you're able to see that there's something wonderful about you. You're able to see your inner greatness. And you say, wow, I'm a wonderful person. I'm made in the image and likeness of God. Put your hands over your chest with me. Say this after me. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. Say it with more spunk, you know. <laughs> not not with, with some doubt. Just say, I'm beautiful. I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. I'm great. I'm great. Do you understand that? Yes. 
every fiber of your being is made in the image and likeness of God. That person beside you may not believe in you so much. Tell that, tell that someone, you know, I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. And so are you. So are you. Amen. 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 Hey, here's number two. Number two is that you grow in endurance. Ask me why. Because if you have a positive mindset, you're able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You're going through some problems now. The positive mindset says, oh, this is going to end one day. And one day the blessing will come. Tell someone beside you, your blessing is coming. coming. You've got to say that. You've got to believe in that. You've got to walk that. You've got to breathe that. It has to be something from your heart. You're going through your struggles right now. You're going through your trials right now. It's okay. Just believe the blessing is coming. Amen? Amen? Here's number three. You enjoy your relationships more. I'll tell you that. If you have a positive mindset, you're going to enjoy your marriage more. You're going to enjoy your children more. You're going to enjoy your parents more. You're going to enjoy your friends more. You really will if you have a positive mindset. Why? Because you look at what is there, the beauty in your friend, the goodness in your friend. And you know what? It's easier to forgive. It's easier to forget if you have a positive mindset. Let me tell you a story. There were two men walking on the beach. They did not know each other, but they were just walking at the same time on the beach. The first one, the first man, had a dog. And you know, he just wanted to share you know, something great about his dog. He told the other guy, who he did not know, he said, excuse me, do you know my dog is a very special dog? And the other man said, really? And he said, yep, I'll show you. He got a driftwood, you know, a piece of wood floating there, got it, threw it to the sea, boom! And you know what the dog did? The dog ran after the piece of wood. But you know what the dog did? It ran on top of the water. <laughs> yep, it did. It really did. And then picked up the, the, the piece of wood, ran back to the master, you know. And the man said to the other friend, well, what do you think of my dog? Huh? 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 And the other man just shook his head and said, your dog doesn't know how to swim. Now there are people like that. They look at their husband, they look at their wife, they look at their mom, they look at their friend, and they look for that which is lacking. You got what I'm saying? You know, your wife may may be such a wonderful person, serves you night and day, cooks for you, serves you, thinks of you, and you say, she's not sexy. You got what I'm saying? Huh? Huh? You, you, You look for that which is lacking. No, don't do that. Look for that which is there. Right? Amen. Hold, hold, hold the hand of someone beside you. Just, just say, you're wonderful. <laughs> Amen. You're going to enjoy that person more, whether that be a son, a child, a friend. Uh, you're going to enjoy that you have a positive mindset. Here's number four. You, you are, you're going to have more success. You want to have more success in your life? Yes. I'll tell you why. You'll have more success if you have a positive Im- uh, mindset. If you have a positive mindset, you will be able to see the opportunities of growth. Somebody who doesn't have a positive mindset will say, there's, there's nothing for me here. Oh, it's so difficult to earn money. My gosh, how difficult it is. Or, how, me, gro- no, I can't do it. They, they, they can't see the opportunity. But if you have a positive mindset, you'll see the opportunity of growth, of development, of abundance. Amen? Number five, you'll be a happier person. If you have a positive mindset, you'll be a happier, happier person. Amen? Okay, are you ready? We're going to talk about how to develop a positive mindset. Are you ready? Everybody say, I'm ready. ready. Number one is you've got to focus on your blessing. Everybody say that. You've got blessings. Now, I know you've got problems as well, but you've got blessings. Focus on the blessing, not on the problem, not on the trial, not on the struggle, and you will have a positive mindset. Focus on the blessing because the blessing is there. I'm going to talk to you about a man by the name of Abraham Lincoln. Do you know that guy? He is one, I'll tell you. You talk to an American and and, and they studied it in class, they, they studied it in history, they will tell you Abraham Lincoln is one of the greatest presidents of American history. He was such a great man who who was able to fight for justice. He had an incredible presidency, successful human being. And yet, people don't know about his life. I'm going to share with you how tragic his life was from the start all the way. Let's read. Abraham Lincoln. In 1809, Abraham Lincoln was born. 
1816, at the age of seven, because his family was forced out of their home, he needed to work. 1818, his mother passed away. And then 1828, his sister died. 1831, a business venture failed. In 1832, he ran for the state legis legislator. What happened? He lost. In 32, in the same year, he lost his job. He wanted to go to law school but couldn't get in. We go on. 1833, he borrowed money from a friend to start a business. By year end, he was bankrupt. In 1835, he was engaged to be married. His fiance died. He became grief stricken. And in 1836, he had a total nervous breakdown and was bedridden for six whole months. He was totally, completely depressed. In 1836, he sought to become a speaker of the state legislature. What happened? He was defeated. In 1840, he sought to become an elector. What happened? He was defeated. And then in 1842, he marries Mary Todd, his wife. They have four boys, but only one will live to maturity. In 1843, he ran for Congress. What happened? He lost. He ran for Congress and won, but two years later, he ran. What happened? He lost again. In 49, he sought the job of a land officer in his home state. He didn't get the job. In 1850, his son Edward died. In 1854, he ran for the Senate of the United States. What happened? He lost. he lost. In 1856, he sought the vice presidential nomination. He got less than 100 votes. In 1858, he ran for Senate again. What happened? He lost, he lost again. And then in 1860, Abraham Lincoln is elected president of the United States. And from then on, he became such a great, fantastic, unbelievable president that, 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 that America ever had. And brothers and sisters, listen to me. Listen to me. You may be going through your struggles now. And you may be going from one problem to another problem to another problem. You do what Abraham Lincoln did. He did not focus on the problem. He focused on the blessing. You could do the same thing right now. If I give you a half a chance to write down on a piece of paper all the tragedies and the problems in your life, you'd be able to fill it up. You'd be able to make that kind of list as well. But don't. What you do is you make a list of all your blessings all the great things and the wonderful things that God has done in your life, and then you will be ready for success. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Everybody say, I'm ready for success. I'm ready for success. I'll tell you another story, and, and I love this story, of, of, uh, of this king and a beggar. The, the king was walking in the plaza, in the town plaza, and he saw a beggar. And, and the beggar was holding a, a beggar's ball, and, and he was just holding holding the ball like this and you know and and the, and the king was passed by with, with with full regalia the royal robes and and entourage and guards and so on and and he saw the beggar and and so he looked at the beggar and said what do you want me to do for you and the beggar said smiled at the king and said you act as if you can give what i want and the king was insulted and he said of course i'm the king what do you want and the beggar said do you really, can you really give me what I want? And the king was so insulted. I am a powerful emperor. I can give you what you want, you name it. And the beggar said, I ask for something simple, that you fill up my beggar's ball. And the king said, I can do that. He snaps a finger, the servant comes with a bag of gold pours the gold, the bag of gold onto that ball. But like as though the ball had a bottomless pit, like, a, like bottomless iced tea, you know what I mean? The, the, the ball swallowed up the gold and it disappeared. And the king was shocked and he snapped his finger again and said, get me another bag and poured more gold and more gold and nothing had disappeared. And the king said, I do not want to be shamed by such a beggar. And he called all his servants and he said, get all my gold in my palace and all the silver and all the coins, bring it here. And they brought, they ran to the palace, they brought in truckloads and cargoes and they poured it on this little beggar's ball. And the beggar ball would, would, beggar's ball would swallow all the gold and all the silver and all the diamonds and all the jewelry and, and, and the entourage and the soldiers and the, and the friends of the king were holding on to him. Stop it, stop it, you're going to lose all your wealth. 
But the king said, my will not be embarrassed by this beggar. And he said, more money and more gold, bring it here. Brothers and sisters, at that particular point, he, the king almost lost all his wealth. And he was so desperate, he knelt down in front of the beggar and he said, beggar, I acknowledge my defeat. And then he held on to the coat of the beggar and he said, Beggar, before I let you go, tell me, what is that beggar's bowl made of? What is that beggar's bowl made of? And the beggar said, The beggar's bowl is made of an ungrateful heart. The ungrateful heart is a beggar's bowl. And if you have an ungrateful heart, you will always remain a beggar. No matter what blessing may come, if you are not grateful for them, you will always be a beggar. You will never be satisfied. No matter how much millions will pour, whether that be 130 million or what, it will be swallowed up. It will be swallowed up and it will be gone. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Blessings are in your life. You got what I'm saying? We, we are not grateful. When you are not grateful for the blessing, just imagine, th think, think of the, think of, you know, the blessings that God has given, even the simple things. You know, we're not grateful for them. The, the, can, can you breathe? Inhale. Exhale. Wonderful, right? That's the blessing. There are people, imagine if you can just inhale and not exhale. That will be terrible. Thank God you can exhale. What if you can just exhale and not inhale? It's terrible. I, I know of people who have asthma. I know of people who have emphysema. They, 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 can't, they can't breathe. <laughs> but no, you, we can breathe. What a blessing. I pray that you don't have a beggar's ball for your heart. Amen? I pray that God... When God sees, when God blesses you, you say, thank God. Amen? Tell someone beside you, I thank God for you. Amen? Here's step number three. Step number two, affirm your divine identity. Say that. I, amen. Again, say, put your hands over your chest with me. Say this with me. I'm a child of God. I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. God loves me. God has a plan for my life. I am anointed. I want you to say those words again and again and again every single day, five minutes a day. Proclaim, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I mean, just say those words and believe in your divine identity from the Lord. Here's number three. Have positive friends. Say that. You know, you, you've got to have friends that infect you with their, their, their ability to affirm, to see the blessing, to see the good. Do you have a positive friend? Yes. Raise your hand if you do. Thank you. If you, do, if you didn't raise your hand and somebody beside you raised her hand, just tell that person, you know, pakilala mo naman siya sa akin. Can you, can you, you know, introduce that person to me? I don't have a positive friend. I pray that you would have a positive friend. And uh, because it's and, and if you don't have a brother Bo, all the all the people I know complain a lot. They just complain and complain. You know, they they every morning the moment they wake up they say what a terrible life, what a terrible day. When they look at the mirror, what a terrible face. I mean, you know that what if you have that kind of a friend, well, you know still remain friendship. Be, be friends with that person. You know, say hi, but then say hello and say bye bye right away. And then go with positive friends, you know. M maintain your friendship. They, they need you, but hang out. Everybody say that. Hang out. Hang out, hang out with positive people. Hang out with people who, who, who love life and, and, and who wake up in the morning and say, this is a great life. This is a wonderful day. And I'm a wonderful person. And I've got wonderful friends. And, and, and great things will happen today. Hang out with people like that. Here's number four. Feel the love. Everybody say that. I wish I could say I could I could say this in English but but let me say this in Filipino first 
because this is much better in Filipino. You know, uh, when, when somebody loves you, when a friend loves you, when a, when a wife or a husband or a parent loves you, you know, you, you should feel the love. In, in Filipino, nam namin mo. Huh? Nam namin mo yung pag-ibig niya. Coming here, my wife was with me on, in the car and, and uh, sh she held my hand, spontaneously held my hand. And again, spontaneously, I did not ask her to. She started massaging it. Reflexology, <laughs> you know? And you know what I did? I said, I'll close my eyes and feel the love. Feel the love. You know, when, 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 your, when your mom, you know, does something for you, feel the love. You don't, don't just take it for granted. You got what I'm saying? When your wife cooks for you and puts a meal on your table, feel the love. Close your eyes first and breathe it in. Breathe in the love. Absorb the love. Make, 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 make it part of you. You're going to be a more positive person. Amen? Here's number five. Keep dreaming. Everybody say that. That's why I teach you to dream because I want you to have a positive mindset. That's why I ask you to fill seven dreams in your novena to God's love so that you, you keep on dreaming. There was a man by the name of Edmund Hillary. Sir Edmund Hillary. He was the first man to climb Mount Everest. Today there are hundreds upon hundreds of people from different nationalities, nations who, who climbed already, but he was the first. But you know what? He did not succeed right away. He failed. He failed at first. And then later on he succeeded. When he failed climbing Mount Everest, he said some wonderful words I want to share with you. Because when he failed to climb Mount Everest, you know what he did? The, the people there at the, at the base of the mountain, they, they created a little stage. They still wanted to honor him, even if he did not, you know, climb Mount Everest. And, and so he went up the stage, and the crowd was there. Mount Everest was right there, you know, beside him. And the crowd was waiting for his words. And he said, hi, hello. But then he stopped talking to the crowd. He talked to Mount Everest. He turned his gaze upon the Everest and he said these words. Mount Everest, you beat me the first time, but I'll beat you the next time. Why? Because you've grown all you are going to grow. But I am still growing. Everybody say those words. I'm still growing. Galing, no? Mount Everest, you're as tall as you can be. You won't grow taller. I will keep on growing. He became a better mountain climber. Brothers and sisters, say that with me again. I'm still growing. I'm still growing. I want you to know that whatever Mount Everest is in your life, you can be bigger than that Mount Everest. You can conquer your problem. You can conquer whatever battle or struggle you're going through. Why? You're still growing. Amen? That's the reason why you come to the feast every Sunday. Amen? You want to keep on growing. You want to change your mindset. It, one feast, two feasts, three, three Sundays, they won't work. It's got to be every Sunday coming here, absorbing, absorbing the truth, changing their mental patterns so that you can have a positive mindset. Here's number six. Confess the good. Say that. I'll give you the four rules on how to confess the good, on how to affirm your life and yourself. Are you ready? This is how to do it. Number one, you've got to be, it has to be stated in the positive, not negative. It has to be in the positive. Example, I'm no longer 10 pounds overweight. That's a little bit negative. It's okay, but it's a bit negative. Why not make it more positive? I'm now 120 pounds. You got me? Let's say you want to lose weight, okay? But make it in the positive. Number two, number two. Affirmations are more effective if you include your name. I'm a patient mother. You, let's say you, you want to grow in patience, okay? Yeah, you, you, you blow your top a lot. So you, I'm a patient mother. Make it better by putting your name. I, Melanie, am a patient mother. You got that? All the mothers here who want to be more patient, say this after me. I, your name? I'm a patient mother. All right? All the wives here who want to be terrific mothers. Ready? Shout it out. I, your name, am a terrific wife. One more time, one more time. Let, let the husband hear it. Okay. One, two, three, go. I am a terrific wife. All right. All the husbands here. Ready? Okay. 
I'm a great husband. And you're going to say that. One, two, go. I, Bo, am a great husband. All right. Now you say that every day. Something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. We go on. Number three. Affirmations will be stated in the present tense. Um, to say, I, George, will be a great success in my career is okay. But it's future. Why not make it present? I, George, am a great success. Yes? Okay, number four. Affirmation must be specific. I, Carl, am wealthy. It's okay. But to make it more specific, I, Carl, am now earning 10,000 pesos in extra passive income each month. It's specific. You got that? Yesterday, I gave a whole seminar on how to be truly rich. Had so much fun with a crowd yesterday. And I told them to confess the truth. And so, and so, of course, because we were many, we could not make it specific. So I told them, just say these words. I, you know, your name, am a multimillionaire. And, uh, you know, just, just telling them to open up their minds that this is a possibility. Unless you see it in your mind, it won't happen. Say this with me. I, I your name, yes. am a multimillionaire. Put your hand over your chest with me. Come on, say that. One more time, one more time. One, two, go. I am a multi-millionaire. Okay. Now say that every day. I was, giving, I was giving my talk on how to be truly rich to a bunch of nuns. Believe me? Huh? Huh? I was teaching the nuns how to be rich. They took a vow of poverty, but I told them, you've got to be rich for your congregation, not for yourself. <laughs> and I told them, Mother Teresa was a multimillionaire. Sure, it was not under her name, and she lived a very austere life, life of poverty, in fact. But she was a multimillionaire, $40 million every single year, spending for the poorest of the poor, you know? And, and to be able to, and it's not for you, it's for others. Amen? Amen. Our multimillions is not for us only. It's for people that we want to bless and help and share. Hallelujah. And uh, here's number seven. Trust in God. You cannot be positive in your mindset if you do not trust in God. That in the midst of your problems and difficulties and trials, God is at work. Amen? There is a beautiful bamboo tree that is found only in China. And I think some parts of the Far East, I'm not sure. But, but in China, I know that this bamboo tree is found. It's called the Mosso bamboo tree. It is so peculiar, it is so special because you plant this bamboo tree on the soil and nothing absolutely happens for five years. Nothing. You look at the soil, nothing is growing. The bamboo tree that you planted there deep in the soil, nothing, abs if you did not know, the characteristic of the mosso bamboo tree, you'd say, it's dead. It's absolutely dead. But then, in five years' time, you see a little twig, a little branch coming out, sprouting from the soil. And you know how fast it will grow? Two feet every day. Unbelievable. It's, it's, almost, it's almost like magic. It's almost, you could actually watch it for 24 hours grow in two feet, by two feet. It will grow up to 95 feet. The mosso bamboo plant. You know why? Ask me why. Five. For five years, one, two, three, four, five, nothing was happening, right? On the surface. Everything was happening inside the soil. It was actually creating a network of roots for five years. So long, they were kilometers long. Roots, a system of roots for five years. And then after five years, boom, it explodes. It was ready. You and I, we sometimes go through that phase. I went through that phase. Not, not maybe even just five years, maybe 10 years, maybe 15, maybe 20. As if nothing was happening. But what God was doing, He was changing your thinking. He was changing your heart. He was changing your attitude. He was changing your beliefs. He was building roots into you. You got that? He was building a root system so that at the right time, everybody say that, the right time, you're going to burst from the soil and you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to expand and flourish. This is what is happening to Light of Jesus community. For 27 years, our community, God was preparing. God was preparing. And now, 
Now is the time. We're flourishing all over the world. All over the world, light of Jesus is springing up, springing out, and, 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 and I'm, I'm seeing it. And, and God is doing the work in your life. You may have be going through problems and trials and struggles, and sometimes you feel so disappointed, so frustrated, so discouraged. Where is God? Where is God working in my relationship? Where is God working in my children? Where is God working in my, in my marriage? Where is God working in my finances? I mean, where is God? I'll tell you something. Maybe what God is doing is He's building His roots into you. But a day will come when the blessing will come forth and you will see it and you will be so amazed. It's going to be like magic. And that's what's happening to my life. I've seen the magic happen and that magic is there in your life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah.